10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0. And liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will win. The space shuttle Atlantis is on its way uh, to the International Space Station after a spectacular launch less than an hour ago. Our Suzanne Malvo and John Zarella are joining me now from the Kennedy Space Center. So Suzanne and John still uh, breaking up over it, a lot of giggles there. All right, it's one thing to, to watch this launch on television, but quite another to see it in person. I remember covering that second John Glenn launch, and the excitement there is palpable, sure. whether you're there at the launch pad or whether you're at the beach. And I understand you've been tweeting about it. Almost Morning long and giggling. I've been tweeting all morning for it. Well, you know, I, this, I was just so thrilled with this. It was it was really an awesome experience. I know for John, he's covered many of these. This is just old hat for him. But I mean, this was my first time, and it's the last one. Uh, I was a guest of Charlie uh, Bolden, who's the, the head of NASA. He had a group uh, that was not far from here, about right. five miles right. from the launch site. And he was absolutely right, Fred, when I, I had a chance to talk to him this morning. And he says, at first you see it, right? You can see the launch, and then you hear it, all of the thunderous noise around it, and then you can feel it. And that's when I, re I, I realized it's absolutely true. It is so different when you're here, because you feel it. Your whole body shakes. It vibrates that kind of sense of excitement and exhilaration. And the people I was with, you know, some of them, John, these are like veteran astronauts, and they were still nervous. They, they were still very tense when they watched that, especially that moment when there was that that technical glitch yeah. that delay yeah, right. and uh, we were fortunate enough just to sit beside them and say so what's going on is this thing gonna happen or not they're on their phones they were just as nervous as we are yeah, what was, was it like, like for you one second yeah, and, exactly. and they had this uh, some arm that they weren't sure had actually retracted and they had to get a visual confirmation uh, before they could say okay we're cool. It's fine. We can go. We're all sitting here going, oh, no, because I'd seen that so many times over the years because it is such a complicated vehicle and there's so many things that, you know, could go wrong. And as you know, that's one of the reasons why the shuttle program is being phased out. Right. Too complicated, too costly, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but boy, what a shame. That, and, and John, you talked to some folks this morning. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We had, uh, you know, lots of folks. We had uh, you know, astronaut Katie Coleman with us this morning up here. And, uh, you know, um, I think what, what's fascinating is that right before the launch, we were sitting here, it's not going to go, it's not going to go. The weather, you know, we're all the naysayers. And then NASA gives the go-ahead, uh, and the launch director says, we're looking really good. And Commander Chris Ferguson had some really, really interesting words want everybody to hear uh, before they lift it off. The shuttle's always going to be a reflection of what a great nation can do when it dares to be bold and commits to follow through. We're not ending the journey today, Mike. We're completing a chapter of a journey that will never end. You and the thousands of men and women who gave their hearts, souls, and their lives for the cause of exploration have rewritten history. Let's light this fire one more time, Mike, and witness this great nation at its best. The crew of Atlantis is ready for launch. Ready for, ready for launch, and, and of course they did, 12-day mission. Uh, Sunday morning, they'll dock with the International Space Station, and uh, it's going to be pretty emotional, I think. It was, uh, there were a lot of people who were emotional uh, with, uh, with Charlie Bolden. One of the people that I had a chance to talk to, we were in the same little group traveling together, was uh, Teddy Kennedy Jr. and his uh, daughter, uh, Kylie. She was there, and uh, they both wanted to kind of avoid the cameras today, but he did make it clear. He said, look, you know, I'm representing the Kennedy family. This is a really proud moment for us. And I, I kept asking, bittersweet, bittersweet. Nobody wants to use that word, you know, because there is a sense of loss here oh, as yeah. well. I mean, it is an emotional experience. It was for him. It was for Charlie as well. And the one other major event that's going to take place, when the shuttle comes back down on the 20th, if they just do the 12-day mission, uh, and they land over here at the Kennedy Space Center, and, and Chris Ferguson, the commander, calls wheel stop. He told me, he said, he's bound and determined to be the last person off the shuttle. But beyond that, all of the workers who have made this possible, oh, absolutely. thousands of them, whoever's here, they're going to be allowed to actually walk out on the runway. That's the plan right now. Really? To touch the vehicle, to be there after they safe it, after everything is, is done. That's the plan right now, you know, to that one time that everybody who's been so much a part of it can say goodbye. 
And it, and it is, it's so emotional, and people yeah. want to touch it. They want to be a part of it, yes. and it's been a part of their lives, a part of their livelihood. Sure. I want to go to our Brooke Baldwin, who's there with some visitors at the Visitor Center, and uh, Brooke, you know, all the gift shop closed down where we were, and people were in a kind of a scramble, a panic, to get something <laughs> to commemorate this very special moment. I imagine people are trying to snatch things up as quickly as possible, taking pictures. What's it like from where you are? Yes. Yes, I have maybe gotten an email or two from producers in the control room saying, hey, Brooke, can you get me some NASA t-shirts, please, while you're down there? It's been an amazing experience, Suzanne. I'm right there with you. It has been my first launch, and what a launch to be here. I met a woman earlier. She was just, you know, tears streaming down her face. She was here with, with her kids and her grandkids. And, and speaking of three generations, take a look to my right. This is a family from Warren, Michigan. This yes. is Wynn, Grandma, Mom's off to the side all these different kids. Uh, when? why was it important? This is your first time. Why now? Because I, it's something I can never see again. You're gonna make me cry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's emotional for you. Yeah, why? Was, because it was something that's never gonna happen again, so they say, I don't know. But I've never seen it and I wanted to. And, uh, and to be here and watch these little ones. Yes, yeah, seeing that this is something that they may never see again. Hey, little sorry. Parker. Hey, little man, can you just talk to me and tell me what you saw just a couple minutes ago? Yeah. What did you just see? A space at a launch. What was the coolest part? The one where the fire came out of all of there, and even the big one came. I just love how children explain what this was like. You know, it's just so simple, and it's almost poignant as well, just the fire and the smoke, and we all felt it sort of in our chest. Take a look at these two guys. They came all the way from? England. England. Whereabouts in England? Uh, New York. Yorkshire. 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 And that's a, that's a bit of a plane ride over here to come see this. Why take the effort? Um, well, personally, I came here about 13 years ago. Um, and the, I think it was um, Endeavour was on the pad, uh, ready to go. Uh, it actually took off three three days after we left, so unfortunately I didn't see that. But I wanted to see one before it was the last one, basically. So thankfully we've been able to see this one. It's been absolutely incredible. Is this something? pretty much speechless. Speechless, so. speechless, you as well? Yeah, yeah it's a fantastic experience. Yeah, we had a great view. Um, well, it's out of this world. Just seeing the, no the noise afterwards was just unbelievable. Seeing the just noise, feeling the noise. We see it one more time in our lives. One more time would be nice. I think yeah. Suzanne, John, I know John has seen several of these, but Suzanne, I'll, I'll come find you shortly and we'll, we'll share and swap stories. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, Brooke, absolutely. You know, there was an interesting story. Uh, Kylie Kennedy told us that there was a guy from New Zealand that she met, came all the way from New Zealand to see this final launch. And even then, we, we had no idea what the weather was going to be like. But I want to let our viewers know that John Zarella, this guy has covered <laughs> 75, 80 launches. Uh, you know, I, do, you have a, do, do you have a job? What are you going to do? What are you going to do tomorrow, John? Uh, you know what, what I've been what's, what's your backup plan? I've been telling people that I'm just glad that the space shuttle is retiring before I'm retiring. <laughs> That's, I don't know what the plan is, but the shuttle's retiring before We're I am. We're going to get you another side. We're gonna get, <laughs> John's going to do something for us here. But and, uh, it's an know, amazing, amazing time, historic, and you've done an incredible job. And tonight at 8 and 10 o'clock, Beyond Atlantis, I'm, I'm putting in a shameless plug for the uh, the special that we did, the one hour special on the end of the space shuttle program. Eight All right, ten. great. We're gonna we're gonna keep an eye for that. All right, thanks, John. Appreciate it. Hey, Fred. All right. Well, John's backup plan is that he's so versatile he can do anything, and we've seen that over the years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, Suzanne, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Ever wondered what it would be like to be on board a space shuttle at the moment of liftoff? Suzanne Malvo has someone who knows um, exactly what that's <laughs> like, and she's going to explain. Suzanne. <laughs> oh, Fred, we have an amazing guest here, uh, Dr. Mae Jemison. She was on Endeavor's uh, shuttle. That was back in 1992, and she's joining us here live uh, to witness, you witness Atlantis in the last uh, shuttle uh, takeoff there. Most of us, we don't know. We have no clue what it's like, what you're experiencing when you are in that shuttle and is about to take off. What goes through your head, through your heart at that moment when you're about to lift off? I think there are a number of different things. One thing is wow i'm really excited it's gonna go today right which is one of the things they were thinking about you have a little bit of butterflies because there's the excitement the anxiety of how the the uh, asset will go and i think the other piece is that you're focused on your job 
And so there's a, you know, all these other parts and a little bit of anxiety. I want it to go. I have butterflies, but then you're focused on your job. So it's it's a really mixture of feelings. What was it like for you today to watch Atlantis? Did you have some, some feelings, mixed emotions about this being the last launch? And do you have some anxiety about where the space program goes now? Well, I think it was a really bittersweet feeling. And I've been looking at it in the way of, you know, you had a friend or a good car or something that did a really good job, but now it's time to move on. So I think some of the, the anxiety that's around the space program may be a little bit misplaced in the sense that we still have humans in space. We as a U.S. no longer have the vehicle that's taking them up in space, but we're still very much part of the major part of the equation in space exploration. But we're actually working on other vehicles. We're working on vehicles that can take us outside of low Earth orbit. So. It's bittersweet. It's sort of like watching a friend saying goodbye to the friend, but then having new horizons to, to meet. And that's where I look at it. Now, now it's, it's kind of a fun story to tell. I love this story. Uh -oh. That you were actually inspired by Star Trek. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you found that you really wanted to get into space and space work and become an astronaut yourself, you made history as the first African-American woman in space. What do young people hold on to now if they say, hey, you know what, I want to do that too, but they don't have the opportunities, they don't see the vision? Well, I'm going to do a, clean the story up a little bit. I always wanted to go in space. Star Trek was a confirmation that it could happen, and Nichelle Nichols has done an incredible job helping get people involved in space exploration. I think the issue is that young people always are interested in doing better and reaching further. The issue surrounds us as adults being able to give them that opportunity. And tell us about that program. You're, you're working with kids now to actually help them get involved in science. Well, students, we, we do programs called the Earth We Share. I, it's my, not my day job. It's my for love of job. It's a nonprofit um, called the Dorothy Jemison Foundation for Excellence. We actively put together programs to help students build critical thinking and problem solving skills to get comfortable with science. We work with middle school students, which is that difficult age where students and start to say, oh, does this fit with me? And we're particularly interested in girls and underrepresented minorities. In fact, we're going to be starting a program just next week in Los Angeles with the Unified School District okay. in Compton that looks at that kind of issue. But the problem in terms of space exploration, how do we go further? We go further by, as adults, making a commitment to continue exploration, to, to not to sort of say, oh, well, we're done, okay. to move further. All right. Well, you know, you've been a role model to so many, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to follow, follow in your path as well. Uh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I appreciate it, May. Hey, Fred. <laughs> All right, Back thank, to you. It, thanks so much. She's an inspiration on so many levels. Appreciate that.